Hello, my name is Dr. Capassi. And I'm Dr. Adarila. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of the slit lamp examination. This here is a typical uh, slit lamp that we use in the eye clinic. As you can see here, once you position the patient, this here is a headrest where the patient rests their forehead against here. This is the chin rest for the patient's chin. And you can adjust the height of the chin rest just using this knob right here. What you want to do is get the patient's eye lined up with this black mark here, which should be at the area of the lateral canthus. Here we have the eyepiece of the sit lamp. As you can see, there's a prescription here that you can power in. So you can uh, adjust the prescription. If you're uh, wearing glasses, you want to keep it at zero on both eyes. But if you're not wearing your glasses, you can actually dial in your prescription for a specific power. You can also adjust the interpupillary distance here um, so that you get a nice uh, stereoscopic view of uh, the patient's eyes. When you come into the room and the slit lamp is positioned, usually it's locked in this position. And so what you want to do is you actually want to move this silver knob here in the counterclockwise position. So you can loosen it up, and when you're done with the test, you want to also tighten it to the clockwise position. And so what you want to do is, once you loosen it up, you can use your right hand on the joystick to move it around, forwards, backwards, left and right. And your left arm will be on the arm of the slit lamp here to position the light source on the patient's eye. As you approach the slit lamp table, you'll notice a box on the bottom left side of the table. In this box here, you have a knob here and a switch on the right side. The knob on the left usually adjusts the intensity of the light, and the switch will turn the slit lamp on and off. Some of the newer machines actually have an intensity and power source in the same knob. Now if I can draw your attention to this side here of the slit lamp table, you'll notice on this arm, there's a silver lever. If you actually pull up on this lever, you can raise or lower the height of the slit lamp table. This way you can get at a comfortable height to keep your back straight during the entire examination. On this side here, you'll see a little button. This button can actually raise and lower the patient's height in the chair. This way they also sit very comfortable during the exam. On some of the newer machines, they actually have a foot pedal here. The foot pedal can raise or lower the patient's chair as well. And you can also adjust the tilt of the chair. This way again, the patient is sitting at the most comfortable position during the entire examination. So now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to use the slit lamp on a patient. Here we go. First thing is, you tell the patient to remove their spectacles. Would you be kind enough to take off your spectacles, please? No problem. Thank you. So you slide the slit lamp into position and tell the patient to put their chin on the chin rest and their forehead against the bar. That's very important. The slit lamp has a fixed focal distance, so if at any point their forehead is away from the bar, you'll be unable to get a clear image. Okay. The next thing, you want to make sure both yourself and the patient is comfortable. Right now it seems like the patient is leaning forward in an awkward position to be at the slit lamp. So let's go ahead and use that lever on the side to adjust the height of the slit lamp to make it more comfortable. How's that? A little bit high. Okay. How's that? That's perfect. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the little knob that was highlighted earlier to make sure that the lateral canthus of the patient is aligned with the black mark. And as you can see here, it's a little bit low. So let's go ahead and correct that. All right, the next thing is for us to be comfortable. The most important thing when using a slit lamp uh, is for you to be comfortable so you can spend the time necessary to see the structures you need without being uncomfortable. So here, as you can see, the slit lamp is too high for me. So what I'm gonna do here is adjust the chair height so that I can see through the eyepieces, but my back remains straight. Perfect. With the slit lamp now on, let's take a brief moment to highlight all the features of how the slit lamp can be adjusted for proper illumination of the structures that you want to see. So as we mentioned before, one hand on the knob here, on the joystick, rotating it counterclockwise will move the slit lamp down. Rotating it clockwise will move the slit lamp up. Okay, moving from Holding the slit lamp in position and moving your entire hand left and right or forwards and backwards will be the macro movement of the slit lamp. Once you're in roughly the position that you want to be in, you want to make fine adjustments, you can go ahead and move the joystick only front and back, left and right to make those micro adjustments. The arm, with one hand always being on the knob here, seen clearly, the knob is the same on both sides here you can adjust the light from being a wide light to being a narrow light, being a slit beam. As 
the name of the machine implies. Okay. Next, the arm can be moved from side to side to move the illumination from left to right in order to better see the structures that need to be seen. Furthermore, there's a filter setting on the top here. Let's move it here so we can get a, a better look at it. Here's a nice zoomed in view of the arm and the slit lamp. This knob here will adjust the, the height of the illumination. All right. So turning it clockwise will reduce the size. Turning it counterclockwise will increase the size of the beam. So here we see a, a magnified view of the arm. I'm going to show you how to change the illumination um, to better see the structures that need to be seen. This knob here, you can rotate it clockwise to decrease the vertical height of the beam. Moving it counterclockwise will increase the vertical height of the beam. Let's take a look at that with the lights turned down so you can actually see um, the size of the beam change. So on the patient's nose, you can see the, the, light, the light beam uh, right there. Now as I turn the knob clockwise, it decreases the vertical height. And as we turn it counterclockwise, it increases the vertical height. Now when we go to the farthest position counterclockwise, the, light, the knob clicks and doesn't allow me to go any further. Let's go ahead and turn the lights back on for a second. When you turn the knob counterclockwise past that clicking point, the light turns blue. And this is the cobalt blue light that's used to see fluorescein. Here we are again at the cobalt blue filter. So the light is blue in illumination. Now to review, to turn it out of the blue source, you just turn the knob clockwise by one tick and you'll be at the standard uh, white illumination. All right. What if you want to see a structure in horizontal illumination? Okay. Well, what we can do here, let's bring the slit lamp down a little bit, is we can take this knob and we can turn it to the side, changing the illumination from vertical to horizontal. Pay attention to the nose where the illumination is visible. Horizontal, vertical. And then if we move it further more, horizontal again. This allows you, in combination with the knob, to see, to measure any structure in any dimension. Often, a site of confusion is how to get the blue light. Here we can see these knobs here. What is this doing? It's changing the intensity of the light from maximum brightness to one level down to one level further down to green. It is important to keep the illumination on maximum um, when viewing the structures. Red free, also the green light, is different than the blue light, which is obtained by moving the knob counterclockwise. The blue light, the cobalt blue light, will allow you to see the fluorescein. The green light, however, will not. It is important not to get this confused. And as a final point, this knob here adjusts the magnification and you just turn it clockwise or counterclockwise to change the magnification of the slit lamp. Other slit lamp models have a little switch here which can be moved left to right to change the magnification. Now there's a lot of principles that we talked about in the slit lamp. Practice will make mastery possible in order to see all the anterior and posterior structures of the eye. Thanks for watching. Hello, so in the second part, we're going to take a closer look at the, at the actual structures of the eye using the slit lamp, and we're also going to learn how to evert the lids to, when looking for foreign bodies or anything under the eyelids. Here we go. Let's go ahead and turn the slit lamp on to take a look at the structures of the eye. Here we can see the illumination on the eyeball. What we're going to do here is we're going to turn the knob so that we make the beam nice and narrow to begin. Now, the first structure we're going to look at are the lids, lashes, and lacrimal system. And we're going to start with the inferior lid. Let's go ahead and increase the illumination by way of moving the knob on the arm and scanning from left to right, looking at all the lashes. 
here we can see that all the lashes are intact and that they're coming out nicely uh, from the lid margin. The lid is also well opposed to the globe itself. There's no space in between and it's not too tight. There's no lashes that are pointing inwards. Let's take a look at the inferior punctum to ensure that it's open. How we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and put our finger right underneath the lower lid and we're just going to pull back a little bit taking a look at the lid. And here we can see in the medial aspect the inferior canaliculus and the opening being the inferior punctum. And here we can see that it's open. That's great. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move the slit lamp upwards by moving the knob clockwise so that now the light is positioned on the sclera. What we're going to do now is we're going to move the knob so that we get adequate illumination. Sometimes this may require a lot of illumination to see the structures. Sometimes it may require reduced illumination to get a more three-dimensional view. We're going to move the slit lamp arm from left to right. You, when looking at the lateral component of the sclera and conjunctiva, you want the arm 45 degrees laterally. When looking at the medial component, you want the arm 45 degrees medially. To highlight the structures, you can get the patient to look left and right to aid you. Would you mind looking to your left, please? Here we can see more of the sclera and conjunctiva. Could you please look to the right? And now on the other side, we move the arm, and we can see the sclera and conjunctiva in detail on the other side. What about inferior and superiorly? Well, let's put the light straight, straight ahead. Let's move the lid down. Would you mind taking a look upwards, please? And here we can see the inferior conjunctiva and sclera. And could you take a look down for me? And we can raise the upper lid and have a look at the superior conjunctiva and sclera. And in this case, everything looks normal. Let's move on to taking a look at the cornea. What we're going to do is we're going to increase the magnification using the knob on the right hand side and we're going to move the light 45 degrees similar to the sclera and conjunctiva. Medially you want to be 45 degrees medial, laterally you want to be 45 degrees lateral. And you're going to adjust the illumination to get a nice thin slit to take a look at the cornea looking for any opacities or foreign bodies. If fluorescein was instilled at this point, you would turn the knob counterclockwise till the light becomes blue, move the knob on the arm, open so you get nice wide illumination and here you'd be looking for any abrasions, any dendritic lesions, um, any sort of staining that's happening with the fluorescein. In this case we see none. Let's go ahead and switch the light to standard illumination again. Let's look at the anterior chamber. Let's look at the von Herrick technique for how to measure angle depth. We're going to move to the lateral aspect of the cornea We're going to make the, the beam very narrow, and we're going, to look at, we're going to look at the shadow that's casted by the light beam onto the iris. And we just want to ensure that the anterior chamber is deeper, the shadow is deeper than half the thickness of the cornea. Now we're going to take a look at the iris using the same techniques mentioned and then a dilated patient to take a look at the lens. That's an overview of the anterior segment exam. Let's finish off by t talking about how to evert the, the superior lid just to look for any foreign bodies underneath. So that's the slit lab exam. At all times it's important to have the patient looking where you want them to look. One trick that can be used is have the patient look at the ear that they can see to keep their fixation straight ahead while looking at the slit lab. Um, let's go ahead and move the slit lamp out of the way so we can take a look at how to evert the lids. So we're going to go ahead and turn the slit lamp off. We're going to evert uh, this patient's left lid. So what we're going to do is take a Q-tip, make sure the Q-tip is clean and not contaminated by touching anywhere, and we're going to use the side that doesn't have the spongy part. 
so the, so the stick end of the Q-tip. We're going to get the patient to look down, okay? We're going to use our other hand to grab onto the lashes of the superior lid. Then we're going to put the Q-tip into the lid crease and we're going to use that as a fulcrum to flip the lid over. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that, how it looks when we do it. So, as you can see our patient is looking down. We're going to go ahead, put the Q-tip right at the lid crease, and we're going to grab the lashes with our other hand. So you can see that the lid here now is mobile. And then we're going to flip using the Q-tip as a fulcrum. And as you can see here, the lid has now been everted. Then what you can do is go ahead and turn the slit lamp back on, move it into position, and have a look to see if there are any foreign bodies underneath the lid. When you're finished that, release the lid and put your finger down and gently put the eyelid back into position. And it's as simple as that.